Hello everyone. Testing, testing. All right, cool. We are good. I am getting set up right now. Okay, so uh, last week we ended off at a really good, really good spot. Um, fix a lot of the smaller issues on the on the pistol. So, um, and then I did a test run of bringing, of exporting the Marmoset viewer into ArtStation. And uh, that worked out really well. So um, I'm gonna open it up right now. Let's go check out the way that it looks in ArtStation. And uh, yeah, let's see how it looks. Okay, so um, yeah, I got a lot of awesome, uh, I don't know, uh, feedback or reception on it. And uh, one of our concept artists, thank you, uh, from our studio, liked it. So I'm, I'm really happy he, he did. Uh, so let's see if I hit play. Mind you, I never, I never worked uh, with Marmoset in, in this capacity where I was able to spend a couple hours uh, checking out the different rendering settings, which uh, maybe also I'm, I'm lacking knowledge, but it felt relatively easy. It looked like there was, it, it had really good quality off the bat. I didn't have to change much, um, except uh, go through like the focus and the depth of field and some of the ambient occlusion settings, but it really does seem like all the anti-aliasing was uh, was there, and um, just it just looked really well out of the box. So uh, this is what I have here. It's in my art station. If you want to check it out, uh, this is my art station. Artstation.com/slash/natalieassport, and you can find. Yeah, you can find it there. The M1911A1 pistol. I've been working on this on and off for a year, I would say. I started it in 2017, uh, but um, maybe visited it every, like literally every three months. And when I did, I spent maybe like a couple hours in it, but that there was just that one hour of just regaining my footing of where I left off. And it's really difficult when you deal with something um, as technical as this, where there's a lot of parts. And it just becomes a lot easier if you spend, if you sort of compress that time and you, rather than spending like one or two hours every month or so, it's best with this type of project to spend like five or six hours, I would say, a day and, and then, or five to six hours in one day and then revisit it maybe the next week. So just kind of compressing the time a little bit. So yeah, this is this is the M1911A1 pistol. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see how this works. I'm gonna go open up Maya. And there is some animation on, you can see it in Marmoset. And I'm trying to figure out, like it works really nice. This This weapon is not rigged. This weapon is not rigged, but I do have some animated, or I have set keys on some of the parts, so that way they animate as if the gun is, the trigger is being pulled, and the slide's going back, and then it, it shoots, and it also explodes, like an exploded version of where all the parts just separate from each other. Cool. Okay, one second. Looks like looks like it got unloaded in my iCloud, so I'm just gonna download that now. Also download a couple other resources that I might need. Okay. So um yeah I 
this is going to be relatively short, but I wanted to finalize this weapon. So I got it like the first pass, checked it out. It was more like a test to bring it from Armaset into Art Station. And then what I want to do is finalize the render, the rendering settings in Marmoset. I saw some, I was experimenting and just playing around with some more settings over the week. And I saw this really cool preset that I think would work better. And it, excuse me, and, and it has um, a lot more contrast. So I'm going to see if this works. Okay, now we have it here. Let's open up. Okay, so now we have the ones in Maya. According to, let's see. So the catch is in my art station, the, the animation didn't export the keyed, this type of animation that I did. It wasn't on a rig, so I'm not sure if that's the reason. So I kind of just want to, explore why wait is that the one okay okay there we go so this this part and also not to keep the mag in there um there's other things i wanted to do but i just kind of want to move on with this I want to integrate it into Art, uh, Art Station in an engine, so Unreal and or Unity. Um, I would like to make it look like it's lying on a table, but this is something that I think I'm going to go back to. I'm not. This is this was actually made for a bigger, bigger project, um, but for right now, I'm just kind of want to put it to the side. This is I'm doing a much better job at putting this to the side in this way than I did when I had left it like two years ago. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, at least I'll have it here and it's going to be, it's going to be good. So, uh, let's see if we go, I can actually see nice. Uh, yeah, there's like all these, like I noticed that there's no, um, number in the bottom, but that's, it's okay. And I was thinking, like, this was an opportunity to write something on here and, like, maybe um, get some, some personalization, put my, like, birth date in here, which is just fun to do. But um, for now, I'll just keep it like, like it is. If I wanted to later, I can always go back to it. Looks really good in Maya. So let's see, Marmoset animation, Marmoset viewer animation. Just... Let's see if, so I'm gonna walk into this. Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Yeah, I guess now this is good night, good, good evening for you, Halforge. Welcome, thanks for joining. Artist snake in that artist signature somewhere in the gun. Yeah, I'm like, ah, I want to do, I want to be, this is like my chance because I'm not going to get sued for anything, you know? It's like my own. Um, you know, maybe I will because you, you kind of nudged it. But um, yeah, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm feeling, uh, to be honest, um, pretty lazy like I didn't want to do anything I didn't even want to get out of bed uh, but you know I there's a lot I I look at the Saturday as a big opportunity to get things get um, not get things done but to give um, 
to dedicate the time to my creative endeavors that are so deserving of that time. So um, I believe that that outweighs my need to just like want to do nothing. So that's that, that's just me. Um, and that's how I was able to get up. Because then I just feel worse, I think, if I spent the whole day um, what I call moping. So, um, yeah. Let's see. Level up your character presentation with animation. Okay, so I'm looking at an article that shows how... Let's. I could bring this over here because obviously I'm sharing my screen. So that's like the perks. We'll discuss my process for creating... Toolbags animation features. Okay, let's see animation. If you're like me, okay, that's okay. Okay, so. Oh, okay, he shows exactly how to animate it. I just want to know how to export from Marmoset to Marmoset Viewer with the animation. Okay, let's see. There, maybe there is a setting that I had to set. Because I didn't even see it show up in. Oh no. My computer's lagging. Keyframe animated camera. Hmm. Wait, do you have to make it in in Marmoset? Uh, I'm animation set length. Almost none. <laughs> Yeah, I totally, uh, totally feel you. Um, do you find that, um, do you find that, like, when you give into that, that it just makes you feel worse? Because that, that's what happens to me. And I have to, um, so I learn from that, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of turn my brain into autopilot and just get things done, even if it means getting up and, like, taking a walk. So... I don't get it. Oh, I remember this. Okay, here's model animation information. Okay. 
let's see. Let's see. I wonder if you can actually override an animation. Probably not. Ooh. And this uh this low poly model that I have, it's it includes all the other weapons. Oops, that is out of focus. It includes all the other ones in the back. So that's why I have this whole list. That's a lot of... Luckily, it looks like everything, all the parts that belong to this gun is at, at the top, so that's good. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a great feeling. But I think also, you know, like, understanding that it's all right. Like, rather than, like, like if I, honestly, if I didn't feel like it, if I really, really didn't feel like it, I would just, like, change, like, turn a little switch and say, okay, now it's time to think differently. Like, okay, rather than say, okay, I have to get up because... This is not a good time way to waste waste time or that this is a waste of time. I'd be like, well, you know what? That must mean that I really need this. So then I'll be like, embrace it completely. So but I just can't be in that middle. Like I, I, I like to look at it like having one foot on the dock and one foot on this boat that's just bobbing up and down. I can't be in the middle. So I have to just like commit to one of them and I'll be fine. So if I'm like committing to sleeping or resting, then I'm like, I'm going to hardcore rest, you know, and like not beat myself over it because you shouldn't. We all need rest. We're human beings and we need it and we need to be able to recover. But on the other hand, if I'm going to jump to the other side, I have to be fully like in on board and, and happy with my choice with both sides. Have you tried baking out the maps in Toolbag? No, I have not. I don't think I've, I've I've gotten the latest version to do that yet. But I haven't. Have you? Do you have Toolbag? I remember a year ago I didn't I didn't really care for the program. I loved the stuff coming out of it, like seeing what people can produce with it. But uh, I didn't mind doing it, not doing it. Um, myself but now that I'm in it I would love to explore more and I personally like this because in substance I ray I love substance I ray but it I, I hate watching it waiting for it to render so I'm I'm not sure what marmoset it must be magic the marmoset just magically renders instantaneously when you move the camera but uh, that's what I like about it so I don't have to wait so that's worth all the time in the world that you save
Oops. Okay, I'm just going to go in here and see how many pieces. Mag, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I think I'm just going to rig it. Even... How, how would that work, though? Oh, I'd have to put it in one... Okay. Do you think it's good? I think people like it when I have these guns in the background. But um, I think I'm going to keep them, I guess, in there for mar for the Marmoset viewer. Yeah, that's actually not bad. And then this one's just going to be animatable. This one is going to stay like this. Might add the bullet and the cartridge in there. So this is like the final stuff. So I'm trying to figure out what to do. Also, I have the bullets. Let's see. I have the bullets in the magazine somewhere. I think it's... Bullet low, bullet mag. Where is it? Other, I think. Let's see. Bullet. There we go. Bullets in chamber. All right. So I have that. That's the hive, yeah. It's the high ones in the, okay, high ones in the chamber. Hmm. Okay. So I want to take. I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. I'm going to use the bullets in chamber with the high as a template. And we're going to grab, now what we're going to do, because we're done with the baking portion, and we got the textures, uh, what I want to do now is set it up as if I was exporting it to a game, like an engine, and this is how I'm going to approach it with the marmoset. So, um, so I want to keep what I have here. Okay, so I'll call this the M1911A, 1911A1 pistol, and just do LOD1, and we're going to we're gonna rig it, so I think I mentioned it, yeah, rigging in, in Maya, okay, cool, so I did actually title that, so if you want to know how to rig weapons in Maya, and... You didn't know how, or you're just curious on how to rig a pistol, this is a perfect time to watch. Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. Yumly just uh, sent me a notification saying, uh, asking me if I saved and made the recipe for delicata squash. Roasted delicata squash. I made that for Thanksgiving. It was really good. Everybody liked it. Okay, so um, I'm going to take this guy here and um, I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to combine it. And what this means is I'm going to have to do some redoing of the, the animation that I had, the keys, but that's okay. Because uh, it's better to do it as a, a rig for right now. So I'm going to take this, uh, let's see, the mag is going to stay in there. I think everything is going to pretty much stay. Yeah, I think so. 
So we're combining all of that. So I call this uh, pistol, pistol mesh. Save that. Cool. Yeah, the marmoset tool bag is, it's it's nice. I would say wait for it to get on sale. I think they they. Had, I'm sure they had some sales like Black Friday and stuff, but and then yeah, I know that's like that's like a big thing here in the United States. I'm not sure how big it is in other countries, but um, yeah, if you can get like an end of the year sale, hop on it, and so you have it. Um, but I think like Substance Ivory holds up really well, and uh, I'm not sure like Blender also has uh, real time rendering. Yeah. No, that's that's fine, Hellforge. Feel free to, you know, just you know, take be honest and take it out on here like this is this is an open, this is a free and safe space, I'd say. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll try to keep I'll keep the 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 additional views in place. I'll try not to to do anything with that. Okay, so I yeah, I'm like I like these views. I think they're really cool. And they're also far far away, far enough away that you can focus on it, but also you know, um it's not like in the way. So that's good. Uh, and then what I want to do is take, get the, where's my channel? Jeez. There we go. Channel box was gone. Okay. So I have that there. And then I want to grab the low mag. I'm going to duplicate that. Okay, we'll leave it like that. And then, so I got the mag and getting the high proxy with the bullets in the chamber. Okay. So obviously like if I, if I went back, I would probably make this yeah, probably make this uh, alpha transparent so that way you could see the bullets actually through the holes, but that's fine. I, I'm building it without really defining the need, so this is fine. Um, so this is the bullet in the chamber. Oh wait, this might be... might actually be no how low poly is this okay so duplicate that oops let's not do that and I'm gonna go to the bullets in the chamber here
so. Oh, hey, actually, you know what? This is the same one. This was in the high poly because it was in the high poly chamber model, but the, the bullets themselves are the high poly. So, I mean, low poly, I think. Uh, 264, this one should be 264. Hey, yep, okay, we're good. So I don't have to like place them and shift them. It's, these are, these are fine. So this is the accurate, I was really, I tried being very, very technical and making sure that the bullets were placed properly in the magazine. So um, these are good. I can take this out. So I'm just going to shift P that and then uh, move that into, uh, where is it? Bolton chamber. Okay. In here. Uh, okay. Cool. Nice. Didn't have to worry about it. So if I wanted to like really, okay, I'm getting excited here. So I have to move this over here. If I wanted to be really, um, I just really wanted to present it really well and just just refine it so so much to the point that I can I can ex. I can animate the bullets going up through the chamber as as the the gun keeps firing. I think that'd be really cool for presentation wise, like for a, like a reel of showing demonstrating how this gun can be used. Um, and I don't have to probably do, like fix this platform because it is stuck like that. So you know, which also makes it like putting putting them in here is like. It's meaningless because you can't see anything unless you did something like this, which, you know, we can't, we can't really see unless you do this. So that was, that was pointless. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. There was no way to actually tell that they were inside. So it's, uh, I mean, this is good enough. Just showing it like that is good, but it'd be nice to also see. Honestly, you could push this down. You could just push this whole thing down. Actually, I can totally do that. That's nah, it's all right, Hellforge. Transparent material. Yeah, that'd be cool. I guess then I would have to add a transparency map for this. And I don't want to do it. Too much work right now. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, like uh, putting, yeah, so the, the holes. I guess... What I wanted to do was, I, I should have planned for this before. So like when there's nothing in here, have the, have the, the holes black. And then when there is something in here, have the holes transparent. I didn't, I didn't think about it. Now, mm hmm. I don't even know what this is. What is that? Hmm. Choices, choices. I think I updated this texture. I think this is. Let me see something. Is this the one? Oh, this is not the updated one. Just notice that. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I 
one. I noticed that wasn't the right one. I guess I just exported. Yeah, this is using the old textures. So I have like a set for Maya and I have a set for Marmoset. Since Maya I'm using the PBR uh, roughness workflow and in Marmoset it uses the glossiness workflow which just makes it more confusing to, to work with too. Um, it doesn't really matter when I export it. Re-export it, it should be fine. Um, but still it's annoying to see some of I, that's why I noticed that I wasn't seeing the updated one. Um, let's see how let's see how my computer handles. Um, Marmoset, Maya, and Substance opened. This would be a testament to the Ethernet cable that I have hooked up rather than my Wi-Fi. Should also move this light so you can see me so I'm not like hiding behind the shadow of the computer yeah <laughs> always gotta save this becomes is the effect worth the time that is the, that is the, the real question the million dollar question really Yeah. I don't know. I guess I wasn't planning to. I think I like the black holes better than having. Because right now, um, I would have to push. The, so that, that magazine was made so it, lo it, it was empty. I didn't think about it when it was loaded because usually you don't think much. You just throw it in. And as a, from a third person game, you don't really think about that. But. Yeah, I don't know. The hard questions. All I'm doing is going in Substance Painter and re-exporting textures. Or I can put my my signature. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I could put something at the bottom. So the magazine. Let's see. M1911 mag marking. No oh, identification. How about this? I'll put a magazine marking at the bottom. Oh, yeah, I'll put a magazine marking at the bottom with like either my name or date. Let's see. bottom of the trigger guard. Hmm. Do they, use, do they have markings at the bottom of the trigger guard? I'm sure they do. They, they have, there's like markings everywhere, I notice. So this is called 45 Auto, and there's a little horse at the bottom. What? I like how when you search for things, you find reference images that you could have used before. Like this one for the magazine. Or this one. That's nice. I like the where in the corner.
So I'm going to save that. Yeah, so I was trying to recreate this the situation here. These are the black holes. Excuse me. If you're gonna take artistic license, you might as well put it where you like. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I'm making yeah, I'm making my own gun. I don't, nobody's gonna like reprimand me. Like how dare you put it where it's not sub where it's not usually in real guns. I can also just make it fire really anything that I want. I could fire marshmallows. That'd be actually funny if I just like made a game where it's like really serious looking weapons and then um and, and they look real and like this and then they shoot like carrots. And marshmallows. And, um, I don't know. What, what's really soft that, like, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't care about, uh, if somebody, like, threw it, to, threw it at you for, like, 100 miles an hour. I mean, I don't know. What if somebody threw a marshmallow at you for 100, after, in 100 miles an hour? I don't know. These are good questions. I think, I think I lost a follower after talking about... <laughs> Shooting, shooting marshmallows out of this. Some people just don't like hearing uh, non-realistic scenarios. Let's see. All right. Um, where is it here? This is why it's nice to have it oriented. Like now, I could just write something. On here. There we go. All right, where is the text? Let's see. Here's the markings. This is the one marking that I didn't do yet, which is the bottom of the magazine. So this would be a good spot, I think. So we'll turn this, turn this off. And let's see if I can just use an alpha in here, the um, the text tool. A murder carrot. Yes. I like the way you're thinking, Hellforge. <laughs> and I mean, just in time for the holidays, we can just do like icicles. Those icicles are really dangerous. <laughs> Sharpening a carrot. Actually, um, for like an Easter egg, I wanted to do a, a, a vegetable gun. Or a V-gun. Wrong, wrong link there. <laughs> a V-gun. It shoots broccoli and carrots and tomatoes. 
And uh, it just leaves giant mess everywhere. Oh my god. My nose itches. Okay. I'm just getting antsy. Why is this taking for uh, so long? <laughs> okay, Meg. Marking. That's weird, but while this is loading, I wonder if I can just export the other maps. Okay, my guess is no, it's not going to work. It can only process one thing at a time. Let's cancel that. Oh god, cancel. There we go. A pea shooter. Simple. Easy. It's already shaped like pellets. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That would actually be an interesting challenge of just making guns that shoot different vegetables. But make them look cool. Like, not just, like, quirky and, and stuff, but make them look like you want to shoot, uh, yeah, peas out of a gun. What is going on here? Can I stop it from computing? Stop. Think it's either font or let's see text. No, it's not text, it's font. There we go. I think courier would actually work. I'm I'm kind of working blind here, but I think So we're going to add a fill, move it down under the sharpen, and then move that font to courier. And then I can label this something. So uh, the cult markings at the bottom is like, it says cult 45 auto. So I can make it like, and then also, let's see what other markings are there. Yeah, some just have like a random random number numbers on them. So I might just put some special dates to me. Put them at the bottom. Who knows why this is, just keeps going like this. I think I broke it. Oh, I turned on the badge details, and I turned them, and it's still on even after I turned them off. It was a little hard. I was testing out some uh, sparkly uh, capabilities, but it's funny that it's still showing. All right. 
Um, I'm gonna just this is a this is a weapon dedicated to my dad. So um, I'm gonna put some dates that are important in here. So we'll do 1968, and then maybe right. Um, one second, I'm gonna grab some. Gonna grab some information here. Upscale shot gun barrel, so you have the peas as buckshot. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah, font, cool. <laughs> Baby corn cobs. Oh, that's so funny. I think uh I'm gonna I'm gonna uh consult with you whenever I get into that. <laughs> Alright, let's see two Alright, let's see. Okay, we'll do 1969. And we'll put... January, February. Yeah, I'll just put, how about that? I'll put my last name in there, which is also my dad's last name. So this works out. Um, MFR, what does MFR mean? We'll just see how it looks, because I might add more or might add less. Oops. No rotation, zero. All right, so it should show up any second now. There we go. I think this is probably the best one, I think. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see if this one's good. Hi, this one's actually not too bad, too. Because it ha has, like, kind of like that cool rust um like tattered feel to it
Oh, they okay. So they both kind of are the same. So we'll keep we'll keep this one here. Oh no. I started playing in Last of Us again. Uh, I am um, trying to get some reference on like, it's like visually environments, vehicles, weapons. So um, thing is there's certain parts that I really want to get to and I have to play like a whole hour or more just to get to where I need to be. Let's see, I think. I think it's better to have two lines, even though the one I'm looking at has three lines. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Yeah, then, then it would no longer be an accurate signature. I'm just looking at others. I'm trying to read. So one of them says like 19200 assist, assistant or something. Uh, and then like a barcode and then WFR. I'm not sure what some of those mean. Always find a good reference. Make sure to save it. Hmm. The problem is, is in the reference, they're much closer together. I'm going to try this out one more time. This one's the one the one in the gun is like a serif or sans serif. I think this one both of these are serif, I think. Yeah. This one's not serif or sun is yeah, not serif. I think serif is the one with the I think the little feet on each letter. It's not showing the letters. Weird. Okay. That's enough. I'll leave it like this.
and we'll keep two lines. So I'll put put it like this. In a doesn't need to make any sense. So I'll just leave it like that. Not sure why. Oh, I see what happened. Okay, cut it off. Man, this is just loading. It's not as, I don't think it's as bad as it was in the beginning, like several weeks ago before the ethernet cable. I think that helped a lot. Mind you, I have like two other softwares opened. See if I just want to make sure it's readable at least somewhat. All right, I can I can spare making it even bigger because um, that's what it looks like on the on the reference. They're taking up a lot of space, so. I wish they add more fonts. So I actually created my own font. I, I don't know if it was worth the trouble. Uh, it was. I needed to do it for a project, but um, you have to make it into a Substance Designer template first. It's <laughs> wonderful. Um, wear on it. Let me see. 
I could probably clean up the nicks a little bit. Thought it was Nyx, but maybe it's not. Sorry, I'm checking the chat now. Yeah. Oh. Clarissa, hey, thanks for joining. I was just, uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't look at the chat for several minutes. I didn't realize that time had gone. How is it going? I think, is this the, is this Clarissa Woods? Oh no, something happened. I can't see the chat. One second. Oh no. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, recently downloaded Star Citizen again. Not having touch it for six. What's uh Star Citizen? That's cool. Our station really isn't the same as walking around and rubbing. <laughs> what? Yes, that's true. Models, but they're all pretty uh, far into the game to see them. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't I haven't played any of those. Dang, I really need to jump, like, look at the chat more. Sometimes, sometimes I just get carried away. Jeez, it's cool. If it's the closest I know, then that's awesome that she joined. She's also a uh, concept artist. All that work for that. But it's nice. It's a little detail. Sometimes spending and giving, giving the details just the, the the right amount of time is is good. Okay, I'm upside down. So that's good. Um, I don't know if I want to worry about the magazine holes just yet. I don't know if you'd really see, be able to see much anyway, and I can't really gauge how it would look, because I don't have the bullet in here. I was going to bring the magazine in here and, and test it out, but then I ran into a lot of other baking issues, so I didn't want to um, didn't want to have to do that, so I didn't do it. All right. Let's see if we do um hmm. Be more accurate to have the holes. Um to have them transparent, I think. Yeah, it's cool. 
yeah, thanks for the support. <laughs> I, 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 I think, I, like, I would watch, I look at the chat, and sometimes I check it too often that I can't get any work done. But at the same time, this is like that weird, streaming is that weird limbo state where you're not working, and you're not just like, you're not just working, and you're not just chatting. Definitely takes some time to get used to. That's cool. Sounds awesome. Star Citizen. Have to check it out. Okay. Do, 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 do. okay. We're refining this again. A little bit more. With alpha test, alpha blending. Opacity. And I don't have space for like, or I do, but what I should have done was have a area where it's just like the mag with the holes and the mag with the with the non non transparent. That's cool. All right, so we'll drag the mag hole here. Mag holes. So alpha and crashes. Solid computer to play it. Mm hmm. Is this a uh, Star Citizen? Why would it crash? Does it? Well, I guess like you said, solid. You need a solid computer. I personally hate playing games that just crash every now and then. And then you just can't trust it. You can't actually play it. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, now I see what's happening. Forget I was looking at the wrong area. So opacity. Uh, I have to make I have to make a fill layer. I don't think none of this has like opacity, proper opacity. So I'm gonna go all the way down here and we're gonna add an opacity channel. What is this? Oh yeah, I can delete that. Let's see. Gonna add a fill layer that just focuses on that just focuses on the opacity. So um, since I'm bringing in the opacity channel way late in the game, it never none of the other uh, layers have it activated. So rather than go through all of them, what I'm gonna do is set the opacity to one, and it should update. Everything should update soon. And then I can go up here to mag holes and put in so opacity is set to zero. So that once once it loads in, 
once everything's loaded in, you'll it'll show properly. Okay, while that's loading, let's see if I can start animating this. Close this out. Oh, okay, still an alpha. See, my... That's not your fault. It's also, like, I'm just... I didn't catch that. Still in alpha. I was wondering. In alpha. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. So now we have... And I'm going to use the low as a template, too. Okay, for right now, we'll, we'll hide this, and we'll go into this. Never had the problem when I'm playing guitar there. <laughs> Costa, welcome. Thanks for joining. How are you doing? Alright. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to try a little something. I'm going to separate this into two parts. Sort of haphazardly separating these.
Okay. Just making a quick bullet here. Maybe I'm able to get it to look as if it's being fired out of the gun. This is how you can like reuse, you can reuse textures. Not have to do everything from scratch. This is the casing. Cartridge, cartridge. And this is the bullet. Costa, how how are you doing today? You've came by my stream a couple times before, right? See triple sixteen notes at what sixteen? Well, one hundred sixty beats per minute. I'll show you skip it. <laughs> Jarrell, ah, hi, Jarrell. I didn't know it was you. How are you? Uh, how are you doing? How is everything going with the uh, with work and projects? I remember we used to like run into each other a lot in the, uh, in the city. Now it's like it's not the case anymore. Yeah, I was recording my one of my songs today. I think it's like 85 beats per minute. Um, I think the most I've had was like 140. But nothing too, too insane or fast-paced. All right, so let's, uh, let's go back into Substance Painter. There we go. Okay, so it just took a second. I'm glad we got to, we were able to work on something else while that was happening. Um, okay, so the wood. I can go into the wood and turn on the, the base opacity. Usually opacity is already set to one, so that's good. So I just let that load in. And then we can close out the wood folders. And the hole will um, I don't want the opacity showing for all of them, just for the mag holes. OK. So I like isolating into the the view here lets me see what's going on. Cool. Oh, interesting. It already kind of isolated it. Hmm. 
Oh, there we go. So now we have the opacity showing through there, but not through other pieces like that's that's supposed to be like that. But um, it's also supposed to be like that, like this one here. I'm not going to question it, but I don't understand why the mask is only affecting that. It's really bizarre. Again, not going to question it because it worked out the way I needed it. But yeah, then it would, it like this kind of stuff. I th I need the hole like that. I didn't want to put the geometry in there, but I also don't want it to be alpha because then there's some thickness to it and it just won't look right. So Yeah, I know. I, I do too. <laughs> I miss it. I guess it depends on what you're playing and writing. For the longest time I was all about death metal, which is on the far the faster side. No no kidding. when I don't write death metal. Alright, so I mean, that actually works better than I thought. I forget how thin this is supposed to rep, rep be looking anyway, and there's some depth in it, so hey, it works out. And uh, I think if anything's empty, I just try to make it double-sided in the engine, or um, It'll be really quick, so this works out. Good call, Hellforge. Uh, I think it was worth it. Looks more realistic that way, too. Another thing I would, if I want to do, I can, can always just make it like more softer, because this is Alpha Blend. Could see the thickness, sorta. There we go. Looks a little better. Yeah, hopefully it just does does uh, double sided geometry well in in Marmoset. And this one. Looks good. That was like the last signature. Saving that, and then we're going to export it in two ways in the glassiness workflow and in the roughness workflow. So, um, export should do it now that there's no other process computing. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's cool. That's the uh, the perks of streaming, I guess. Get to you're not just isolated and in in a vacuum. Uh, let's see. Okay, so now I have to do converted from metal into yeah, this one, I think. All right. What I like about Marmoset is it automatically updates, so we can. Which I didn't know, I didn't realize until I went to go and update it, and I realized um, I didn't have to. So let, let's take a look. No, I appreciate your suggestions, Hellforge. So continue. Continue um, suggesting. Okay, so we're not going to be able to see under here. All right, so let's, for some reason, it's not uploading. Maybe I think I have to click on the, on here. I know I didn't even have to, didn't even have to do anything. It was weird.
Okay, well, I can just bring in, let's see. I'll just load it in again. But something, it, it just, oh, wait, there's a refresh. Hold on. If I hit refresh, what happens? The little refresh button. This might work. Oh, it did it. Okay, so. Cool. So that worked. I love this depth of field. It's really cool. All right, so we got some nice, um, nice signature, I guess. Some customization, or what do you call it? Um, mm, personalization. Personalization. Okay, uh, so that's good. Uh, let's go and jump into Maya. So I'm going to save this, even though I didn't do anything here. Save it. We're going to jump into Maya. Click on here. And, oh, I hid my, I forgot I hid my exploded views. I'm hoping, I'm thinking that this, the, the rig session is going to be fairly quick. It is just like two bones. And that's why I wanted to set the, the bullet up because maybe I want to, let's see, maybe I wanted to look like the bullet's ejecting. See if this all works. Okay, cool. So that updated. So I'm working with two sets of textures. Um, one's for Maya and then one's for Marmoset. Specifically, this gun for is mainly for uh, presentation purposes at this point. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Costa. I appreciate it, everyone. I spend too much time on this. <laughs> So I'm I'm glad it um, I'm glad it paid off and I'm glad y'all really like it. Um, it really means a lot. So um, Maya, I'm not going to be too concerned because I didn't set it up for transparency, so I'm not focused on that right now. Um, I can take a look though in Marmoset to see how it looks, and it's just going to be we're going to be blinded here for a second. All right, why isn't it zooming in? Zoom in. Is there a way to focus? Eh, okay. We're getting there. For some reason, it's only make, letting me like pan quickly. There we go, but not zoom in quickly. Alright, so right now, the black holes are still there, but um, they, they would get overwritten by the opacity, which I didn't hook up. So let's see what I have to do. Okay, transparency is down here. Of course, I can't get to the transparency in here. Next. Okay, let's drag in a transparency map. Costa, are you working on any 
any new stuff that you uh, like if you want to post anything yeah by, for anybody watching if you have any new work that you want to share feel free to post in the chat and also um, I have a discord workspace so if you wanted to join that I can post uh, that in the chat as well but that is also a place where you can share your work share others work share things that inspire you I have like Things from news to music to veganism to games uh, to art station, an art station stockpile place where you could just throw in your or, or your art station or others art stations. All right, let's see. Okay, so I have the this height. Oh, jeez. Okay, so uh, when I went to export, it doesn't export the opacity map. So let's see if we get a metallic rough roughness. So I don't know how Marmoset handles. Let's add... Oh wait, diffuse. It should have, should have had it. So let's go back in here. going on here. There we go. Well, this is use alpha. Okay. Well, everything is clearly <laughs> everything is clearly very, very um, very transparent or very yeah very transparent I'm not sure what's going on there hmm Ah, there we go. Okay, I changed it to cut out, and it looked like that worked out. Perfect. Yes. Okay, cool. So that's good. Okay, so this is doing what I didn't want, which is backface calling. Uh, let's see if I can go in and change like the mesh to backface. Should be okay. I think I saw it too. I think it's in render render settings. And when we're gonna go down to sliding. Main camera maybe. See, doing retopo for the character. This character from from Gargoyles. That's neat. Is that from the show The Gargoyles? I haven't seen that show in such a long time. Just check some point. If I can get closure, I'm gonna really move on to the next thing. Closure. That's like so important with these with these assets. 
Won't, won't the shells block the inside bat? Yeah, they would, but, like, if they're not, if nothing's in them, the reason, like, I put the black is to make it look like you're seeing into the empty barrel, or the empty mag. Ah, cool. Talon, I don't remember. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see if they do have, um, I thought they would have anti-aliasing in here, or not anti-aliasing, um, back face calling. And by that, I mean, like, to turn it off so it doesn't call the back face. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> Did it work? Did I not do the right one? It's mag low. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm getting... Okay, so I turned it off there. But, um... It's... Right here, I think. Right? No? Okay, it's one of these mags. I think it's this one. There we go. Okay, watch this. There we go. So now we can actually see it looks... I like Marmoset. It's actually fairly straightforward and easy. I didn't actually have to look things up to, to understand it. So that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. So for those that are watching and that want, wants to get more involved with Marmoset, hopefully this helps. Just like small things like uh, turning off back face culling and setting transparency and um, animation, which I'm probably not going to get to, actually. Um, but we got that. So that's something. And then if we go in, so I think we're good here then. So what I'm going to do is close out, set this up, leave this like that, save this, and I'm going to close out of this. And so now I'm going to go back into Maya. Um, what I want to do, and yeah, I'm not going to worry about transparency here. Um, but now what I can do is go back and... Let's see. Bullets in chamber. I can group this and set this like full mag. And now it, I won't be able to see them here, obviously, because there's no transparency. But when I bring this into Marmoset, it should be easier to see. And can, I can move this over to the side. But I'm going to leave it like this for now, and then I can move it in Marmoset. Okay, so this one, I have that. I have the low cartridge. Okay. So I'm going to hide this. And then this one, let's see. I'm going to hide this the proxy and now this is like my game mesh here and what I'm gonna do is create a quick rig for this so that way um, the parts that I had animated before just like keyed the uh, the transforms I can actually just make okay let's see if it There we go. So we have it all set up here. 
And what we're going to do is, and you know what I just thought about? I didn't need to, I didn't need to merge all of this. Don't do that. Don't merge all of that. So I'm going to duplicate that and put that under here. And I'll label this body. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we'll keep we'll keep the magazine in here. And then I'll bring some joints in here, create joints. Oh wait, saving this again. Mod models, change this to rigging, and then skeleton, create joints. I'll just put it in the center for now. I don't really know where I should put it. Move one, put one joint there. I'll put another joint, the trigger, and then another joint. On the slide, somewhere, doesn't really matter. Just put it here. And now I'm going to go back into the 3D view. Go to wireframe. And now what I want to do is, so I'll label this as um, rig for now. That is the hammer. This is the trigger. You can you can use it. Ship it. Seeing the rigging process for a weapon is interesting. Ah, okay. Yeah, this is um this is much simpler than a character rig. But it also depends on what how many moving parts you have on your on your weapon. It could just be as intricate as a as an average character. So this is a slide. Uh, you try try to determine which parts are going to be moving, and then let's see. Uh, duplicate. It's good to determine to determine like the middle of your character your character your object so like this part I just put it right in the middle um, but it, it could very much be in like the, the the origin but then if I put in the origin like I, I have no there's no correlation to how I set up the the body of the gun probably would have pushed it further for animation which I can probably do now I suppose. Oops. Here we'll move we'll move all of this here. Okay. So now that I have that set up. Can freeze transforms. And I can center all of these to the grid. 
center object, center origin pivot. Cool. And now I can unparent that and move that straight to the origin. So that's a little bit more friendly, I think, to the to the engine. You have a weapon with an ammo belt, like an M60. Would the ammo belt itself have some crazy armature to it? Possibly, if it's skinned and it's it needs to look like um, organic and just like a cloth, like a strap. Um, which like an ammo belt is going to have all these points of articulation. Then yeah, it's going to going to have quite a few bones, I think, depending on how smooth you want it to be. Or in the game, in the world of games, uh, you might fake it. Like it, it might even just be on a mesh deformer. And if that's handled in the game engine, then, or supported in the game engine, then you can use something like that. So I'm just putting it at the edge of the magazine. So this is the mag joint. And I think we got it pretty good. So that's the, I'll just call this the main or body. And then we have the hammer, the trigger, the slide. Um, if I wanted to add it like... This is the slide release, the slide stop. Um, I can also have it in there just in case. So that might be something I want to do. And always point, put the joint where it's going to pivot, whatever you're working on. Uh, so like for example, this has its own pivot, which works out. So if I duplicate this, I can do a snap to that. I think that's it. Just want to make sure. Yeah. So this is slide stop. Cool. Uh, another thing is how detailed, like how, how seriously detailed do you want it? Um, what you would, you might want to do is like even have this button to be pushable, which obviously like I modeled it that way. So if we wanted to do that, let's see, can I select it? Um, this, this can be pushed in. I'm so glad this, uh, all these things that I did earlier, earlier on, um, is going to really help me now and make my life a lot easier. Like everything here is accommodated already and supported in the mesh. So I'll duplicate this and hey, uh, why not have a mag release um, animated button? Oops. There we go. Maybe push it in just a little bit if you can't see it. Um, because then I could just push it in. Okay. Uh, actually, I'll bring it out. It should be fine. So this is the mag release, and this is probably the most intricate uh, pistol that I've rigged, because usually it's like not necessary. Okay, so save that. Yeah, that's actually a good point, too. Um, having geometry that's rigging friendly. Um, if you're making an animo belt and it's going to have a lot of points of articulation, even if, like, 
like you look at this example, this is a rigid object, so I didn't put any um, edges going across, spanning across to like allow it to bend. But if it was supposed to, like like an ammo belt, uh, then I would have to uh, accommodate and add edges to support that curving, that deformation that, that that's planned. Same as actually, this is a good point too. If I know that this weapon is going to be used in a scene that's going to be bent, like somebody's just going to superhumanly bend, bend this pistol, or it was going to melt or in some way, then I need to add edge loops to support that. But maybe not like now, but you might need to have like another model. Um, you duplicate a duplicate of this model with the added edges. One second, I'll take a look at that. Okay, so I'm saving this. I'm like double saving, triple saving, um, because this is can get scary. I'm just gonna make sure that my, just making sure that my um, incremental save is on because I just got a, a new computer at my work, and I, I every time I get a, a new computer or a new Maya, and I have to turn on enable the incremental save I forget sometimes and it takes a horrific tra uh, crash to make me realize that I didn't I did not set it on <laughs> triple save triple H I know triple H are you talking about the wrestler oh nice that is one heavy gun. Yeah, I like the uh, the color you gave on the on the muzzle. So the ammo belt is that is that the ammo belt? It's the one at the bottom right. You definitely yeah, I definitely want to make sure that the geometry accommodates for it. Or you can try you can try doing it, like uh, try try out a test rig. Looks really good. Looks really cool. I love that all those. Hmm. Are they all PBR friendly? I mean, they look like it, and I was just wondering because it looks like they're missing some contrast to them. And that's one thing I ran into a lot with working in PBR is that I would keep the blacks in range so much that my blacks started to look gray. And then I started realizing that um, I was putting the values too high. Like I, instead of putting 0.005, I put 0.05 or 0.5 and it just looked gray. So um, just make sure that the values are correct. Okay, so now I have all of this. And what I'm going to do is save again. And I'm going to go to skin. So I'm selecting I'm selecting all of the meshes. And then I'm selecting all of the joints. I found that the particular order didn't matter anymore. So skin, rig, rig skin. And then skin, bind skin. So now I, I bound it, and now you got all these skin clusters. Um, and now you can't move the pivot point. The um, translations are all locked, the, the transformations. And now you can only move the parts uh, by the joints. And now this is, this is fun. Um, so if I try to move the trigger now, uh, the, Maya doesn't know that it's a, a hard surface object. So it's behaving as if it were skin, so as if it's a soft uh, body, and this is really cool. I love um, I love stuff like this. Uh, sometimes I'm like look at it, and if I'm deforming like a vehicle, I'm like ooh, it feels. I would love to have like a, you know, like some people like that those slimes or like the squishies, stress things, stress toys. Something like this, where it looks super realistic, metallic, and then you could just like, it's like really soft to touch. I think this would be a good popular item, actually. Uh, okay, so now the fun part is painting weights. And I actually love painting weights for hard surface objects, because you could just flood 
you flood the objects with zero, 100% or 0% of that joint, joint's influence. So if I select, uh, right now the slide, I could have positioned this a little bit better and I totally forgot to slide. Okay, one second. We're gonna undo that, that skin, the skin bind really quick because I wanna just center all of this. So we're moving this. Okay, the body's centered, cool. Yeah. Okay, so it was just slightly off, so I don't want to do that. There. Listening to a hypothetical by Emigrate, and it is featuring Marilyn Manson. It's a really good song. I recommend anybody that likes heavy rock, metal, and Marilyn Manson to check it out. Apparently it came out a couple of years ago, and I just found out about it this week. All right. Why is this? Shouldn't be point zero anything, honestly. It's kind of weird. Okay. Okay, I'll leave the slide stop off centered. The mag release is off centered, that's fine. Well, before I do that, let's go to the slide. slide like that and we'll parent it with the body now we should be good Let me see something. Just wondering why 
why the join is showing an offset in all three translations shouldn't be. I might do something where I, I'll isolate this and I'm going to redraw some of the bones. So if I, let's, let me create a joint and I'll, there we go, have it there. Oh. No. Okay, let's try this again. Hmm. All right, well, doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. Let's see. That's fine. So, um, yeah, I only have it going up and right. So it should have had really only transformations in the Y and Z axis, but not in the X. So I'm not sure what's going on. It's not a big deal, though. Um, It'll be the light up set up at Unreal. You're all within PBR. I think that's that's better to have it all in PBR than um, have it just completely off. So that's that's awesome that you do have it. Doing those weapons. So when I eventually get back, it'll look more. Cool. Oh, thanks. So I'm 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 glad I helped. No, it takes it takes a lot of time and like. Just practice getting getting familiar, I think. This is so weird. Like, it looks... Like, if I rotate... Freeze transform. Ah, I see. So weird. Okay, I might need to do all this again. Let's let's try this again. I'm gonna hide that. Create joint right next. Okay, there we go. All right, so that that makes a little more sense. I don't know if that does actually, <laughs> but it's not in all three axes. It's what they call redrawing the skeleton, but I don't remember all the specific steps, because I don't do rigging very often anymore. I'm trying to remember what I did, uh, what I used to do. So the reason I want to keep it simple is because I want to be able to, the less transforms I have to remember, the less I have to remember the the, the main state of the, of the gun. Otherwise, I have to make um, handles for this. 
so I don't actually accidentally move things too too far out of out of whack, and I know where they they are by default. Um, okay, let's just leave it like that for now. For now. And we'll call this body. We will select all of these. Save it. Go to skin, bind skin. And we can see that it's now moving. Got the magnet on. There we go. So now we can um, assign the whole gun to this joint. So I can go here, select paint skin weights tool. So I'm kind of doing a um, subtractive me method. So I'm flooding. So this this body joint is going to control everything. So that's good. Then the hammer, um, I'm going to have, now I can go in and go to hammer. And let's see. So I can select all of these. And now I can go into the hammer itself and flood. Oops. I messed it up. Jesus. This is what I was saying. So things happen like this. What happened here? I'm going to get a hammer. Hammer should be set to flood. And then everything else should be set with a value. It's good. So now if I rotate the hammer. Only the hammer should move. So now, um, now that I did that, I'm going to go through all the other ones. And we're going to go to skin weights. or paint weights. So, so now um, I can go to the mag and the mag is only going to be let's see. So I can go to the actual mag model and flood it, then go to the mag release. Go to the mag release model, flood that. Slide stop. Go to the model. There we go, and then go. Lastly, go to the trigger and flood that. So now we have our fully rigged gun, and that's that's how it works. Um, now, um, the thing is, going to be a little tricky is if I move the slide and stuff. I have to remember uh, the value um, that this is at its current state, so that way I don't accidentally put it too far forward or too far back. Um, so we have like. You can set up controls, and um, I don't know if I have it here. Dang it, I didn't set it up. Usually have my cool rigging thing, but I wonder if they have it. Create a quick control rig. Oops, I think I did the wrong thing. Cancel. Turn that off. All right, so I have to go in just a second. Um, let's see.
Um, what I'm going to do, so rather than create like controls and stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this, another duplicate, or I can, see, I can move my low, all my low models, um, I can move them. I think it was 0 0.062 forward. Alright, yeah, I'll do that. So 0 0.062. So this is uh, my template. So if anything goes wrong, I just will try to move it all back into place. And it should be okay. So with that said, I'm going to hide that again. And now... Um, oh yeah, actually I can't hide that because that actually has the animation. So now what I can do is I think about the time. So let's say I want something to happen in five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. So maybe every, maybe every five seconds it goes to shoot. So um, that's 120. It's 120. So we'll go to display, heads up. Oh, no, windows, UI elements, range slider. And we'll have 120. All right, let's see. Hellforge wrote a bunch of stuff. <laughs> I'm going to check it out. Oh, thanks, Hellforge. It's, uh, I mean, you're welcome, and thank you very much for the kind words and support. I'm glad it, I'm glad it's helped you. It's, uh, it, it means a lot to know that it's, it's not just, uh, cause I, you know, like, I, I think we all do this for, like, ourselves and stuff. Hmm, okay. So, um, forgot my train of thought. That's wonderful. Um, but yeah, it's just streaming such an interesting thing, and I'm really glad to be a part of it. Let's see. Okay, so 120. So I'm going to take these guys here and move them up. So, let's see. 24 times let's do 10 seconds so we'll have this be 20 240 seconds so 10 seconds and we'll move this over here oops what happened here Okay. Okay, so now do I want to keep the mag in? But we're just using this as reference. for the slide. We're going to key this slide. Key selected. Not making any fancy, fancy animation. Just 
just going to have it. Oh, wait. It's key selected. Key selected. Now, the real question is why isn't it moving? Oh, because I didn't move it. I thought I moved it. I didn't move it. Hmm, okay. Let's see what happened here. Okay, so at one point, maybe I didn't paint the weights. There we go. Cool, so we have that. Good. Oh, ha. Huh. Forget about all the other. forget about these guys here. So this needs to... This also needs to move with the slide. Cool. Okay. And then also figuring out once I once I got the emotions then I'll um then I'll I'll worry about the, the timing. But right now I'm just working on the on the movements. So let's see, trigger one thirty. Key selected, key selected, and then, oh, need to do the hammer, okay, oh, well, that's okay, so key selected, key selected, and then we're going to rotate this. negative 60. Key selected. Cool. So as you can see, it's moving perfectly. And then the trigger is the only one we're going to worry about. We'll bring this so we don't need Let's delete. Okay, hammer. Keep mixing the trigger and the hammer up. Trigger. Okay. So key selected. Key selected. And then we're going to go and move this in. 
I don't know how in it should go, but I think that should be pretty good enough to show that the trigger is being pushed or pulled. Um, whoa, hey, I am missing some people that just joined. <laughs> The Kev, Kev Dev. Um, thanks for joining. That's actually uh, a good um, comparison. Was it a crazy train? I missed it. I missed that joke. Wish I could take more 3D modeling classes. Uh, yeah. I, I, it means a lot that you say that. In general, I, I, I like... Um, I don't know. I feel like more people should take 3D modeling classes. They're, they're a lot of fun. And it was great having you in the class. Uh, how, how are you doing? You got any, um, any fun new projects that you're working on? Any games? Oh, no. It's a bot. Don't click the link. What if I did? You lost your train of thought. Hmm. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm trying to think of another joke to add on to that. Okay, um, so this is like if you were in Marmoset and then you're like watching and it's like, oh, shoot, it shoots. Um, let's see. Obviously, it's not going to do this exact motion. So I'm, I'm going to look into, I think... The mechanics here. Uh, let's see. It's probably like I, now I have to work on the speed. So just to give you a heads up, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it in like a minute. Um, so what I'll show you what I'm planning to do. So what you're seeing here is like I want to export this animation, refine the animation enough. Um, very simple, so you're seeing it in Marmoset Viewer. You can just view it, and then every five seconds, this happens. And then you have the rest of the the exploded models below. I would hide this, because I no longer need it. So hide that. So it would be something like that. You can go towards the bottom. And then towards the back, you have like all the other uh, models that are repositioned. And um, every five seconds it plays that animation. Maybe the bullet comes out that I had I had made here. There we go. And of course we have the cartridge that's separated with the bullet and the yeah right here. So we have all these different components. So the shell would eject to the left, and the bullet would fly out. That would be something like nice to have. And this is something I'm like going really overboard with this gun because I'm just trying to really try out all these different workflows. Um, essentially, like having just a good render of your of your model with the wireframe showing and poly count and the maps is usually sufficient when you're showing an art station. But I'm just trying to push the envelope as much as I can. And um, yeah, if we go to Marmoset, I have this viewer. Uh, this, let's just go up here. Yeah, so I have this setting here, but what I want to do is take this camera setting that I found, this preset here, and it's a Polaroid. Where is it? Polaroid. And take this and just dial it back a little, but I really want something like this to be the final, the final look. Because um, it just it looks more grittier and exactly what I want. So I'll just dial it back a little. And then I'm going to post it in ArtStation. So again, if, um, if you're not familiar with my ArtStation, I'll post it in the link. Let's see. So you can go to ArtStation.com slash Natalie Esport. And there we go. And you can see my progress my first pass in our station here and you can actually hit play in the marmoset viewer and view this in 
real time. So um, I'm hoping to get the other ones submitted hopefully by tomorrow. But uh, at least we got to go through a, quite a bit, actually. So yeah, it was it was great. If you added if you added a joke on top of that, it might derail the whole thing. Oh jeez, Hellforge. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Um, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of a pun, but I just I can't top it. I just I just can't. Uh, finishing up capstone. Also did programming. Oh my gosh. No modeling! It's okay. That is a lot of stuff. Honestly, can't think of how you would be able to squeeze modeling into that. I don't know, Helford, do you think... <laughs> and maybe if you could squeeze in, like, compositing of VFX, too, maybe? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, if you have, like, a dedicated modeler, then why... Uh... That's that's good to have someone that's dedicated like that, and I'm sure that uh, your team is happy to have you doing juggling all of those other things. Uh, talk about a jack of all trades. So um, that's that's really cool. I wish you best of luck on your capstone. I know this semester has been much different than any other semester, so hopefully you're able to find ways to work through it and. Um, work with what's best for you. Jeez. Hopefully, so I'm guessing the modeler is doing more than just modeling. Two, team of two. Yeah, um, the, the smaller the team, the more hats you'll wear. The bigger the team, the more specialized you can be in, but you don't really get to um, work in, most, in a lot of different things. So there's like a definitely a, a trade-off there well good luck kev um hellforge thanks for tuning in thanks everybody that was tuning in and lurking if you were um but feel free next time if you want to just comment uh add things to the chat that's what you know makes it lively but anyway it's the first week of december and then we have a holiday-filled uh, month throughout. So I'm um, planning to come in um, next Saturday. I'll, I'll try to stream next Saturday. Um, if, if I can't, then I might be seeing you in the next year because uh, it's just, just holiday stuff. Um, but I'll post in my Discord. I'll also post my Discord right now. Uh, let's see. And I'll try to keep that updated if, if I find that I'm not going to be posting until January or um, streaming until January. Um, after this, after this uh, session with this gun, this is this is done. Uh, I'll be posting it in ArtStation and then I'll move on to some other good stuff. I might be working on a subway station uh, for games. So um, hopefully it could be working in Unreal. And... If I don't do environments, it just kind of depends how, how things go. I'll be working on an original character. Let's see. And my stomach's growling, meaning that I definitely am ready to go eat. <laughs> All right, here we go. So that's my Discord. Thanks. Hellforge, thanks uh, Kev, thanks everyone, and have a good rest of your evening, night, morning, wherever you're tuning in from. All right, thanks. See ya. Bye.